Hey, welcome everybody. It's QITV season two. We're continuing on our journey. Today, we're gonna have Karen Gibbs from Northcott Fabrics. She's a batik designer. She's gonna show us all about batiks. And at the end of today's program, I'm gonna give you a hint of some new things coming for QITV, but you have to hold on till the end to find out. I'm also gonna show you a tutorial on a new thing we've got in store that we're now carrying on our online store and in stores, and it's diamond painting. So we're gonna show you that in our tutorial to learn with Lisa portion. So let's get started. So today we have got Karen Gibbs from Northcott. She designs batiks and she's going to tell us all about some of the cool things to do with batiks and how they're made. So Karen. Yes. How did you get involved with batiks? Um, how did I get involved? I got involved with the, um, the quilting industry when I walked into a quilt store. I used to be a sweater designer. Oh. You know all those Christmas sweaters that are now notorious? The ugly Christmas sweaters? Yeah. Oh, right then. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> that I was you. <laughs> Oh no. So all I right. walked into a quilt shop and I was like, oh, wow, look, my whole color palette's here. And I fell in love with the batik end of it. I love the hand process of batiks um, because it's a, a quilting thing. We, we love the hand work, right, mm -hmm. of um, homemade quilts. And that's what I like about batik. So these are all made by hand. Yes. And in order for them to be called a batik, they are made in Indonesia. Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a cruise somewhere, which I've been, yeah. and you see a sign in Jamaica saying batiks, they're not. Right. And actually, we pronounce them when you're in Indonesia. Maybe you'll go on a trip with me there. Yeah, would that be good? Yeah, that would be <laughs> great. I'm there. <laughs> um, if um, They call it batik. So it's batik. batik. And the batik means you are using a chop with wax. Okay. So there's a difference between hand eye. There's a difference between batik. And there's difference between maybe overprinting with it or maybe putting metallic on it. All of these different things that we all group together as a batik. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I know you said the word chop, but that's spelled weird. So if somebody was going to look see that in a written material somewhere, it would be spelled... T J A P or CAP C A P. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean that weird spelling. But chop, <laughs> chop. chop is it's like yeah. C H O P chop. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do they do with these? These actually are made. Um, the the artisan who makes it is called a Tukan chop, and it's grandfathered in. Um, basically, if you are making a chop, um, you have been taught by your family. Oh, okay. Okay. So it takes about 20 days to make and they're made out of copper. Um, they take my black and white drawing and they make it, they turn it into um, pieces of copper that's all nice and even here because it has to dip right. in the wax. Yeah. Right. So you might, I hope you can see that it is kind of. Yeah. And when you're thinking about. Level, and then you can see the, the actual design of it. And like this one is like a polka dot. That's like a paisley almost. That yes, one. yes. Okay, so what do they do with these? These um, we dip in wax. So uh, you dip, first you put the color, lay the color down on the fabric, and then you dip them into the wax, and you put the wax on the fabric. And the reason you put the wax on the fabric is to hold that initial color. Okay. So it's a little backwards from like regular cotton. You right. do the motif first. So here's the paisley one. See the fabric right there? Yes. Okay. So the white or the creamy color was put down first. This holds that creamy color down okay. okay and then it dries and then once it's dry we bleach it out the the and then apply oh, the, the background color. and the wax keeps you from over dyeing yes onto the where the cream okay yeah i got you so you have the two-tone uh kind of thing so and then to get the wax out um then you have to wash it in hot hot boiling water okay yeah and you can almost wash it in like a cement mixer type of thing to get that wax out. Now, there's different things like different kinds of wax. Um, we use paraffin and beeswax, a combination. But if it's rainy season, um, we use a different uh, formula of that. Now, when's rainy season for them? Um, October through March. And then Ooh. there's like party season. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> chops. Sunny we got the chops and wonderful. The party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. <laughs> party in with the chops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So how many colors can you layer up on these in that fashion? Well, uh, generally, um, when I go to choose my color palettes, I choose three to four colors in the motif and then three to four colors to mix in the background. Okay. Okay. And it's like a watercolor painting, all right, as opposed to acrylic painting. If you think cotton, regular cotton fabric, acrylic painting, you're layering your color, right? Right. Watercolor is all kind of blending together. Sure. Okay. So if I apply a certain color first, and then I apply another color. It could um, look like mud season really fast. Oh, sure. Right. It just all turns it's brown. Just, right. Right. And we scrunch it up. It's called smoking. OK. Or smocking. And it's the scrunching process. And you, you can um, see that in a lot of uh, batik making videos. And what that does is it helps the color travel through. Like this? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. It helps the color travel through. And then if you look like in here, you can see the different colors right. in there. Okay, see how I've got different colors in the motif versus in the background? Yes. Okay, um, so each one I've chosen, and you can see better with this one here, there's so many multis, right? Right. And then um, I have a special technique, how to apply color. Okay. It's called a squirt bottle. A squirt bottle, all right, <laughs> all right. But that way for quilting, I get in a four inch square, I get more color, a multi in a four inch square, right. as opposed to big balls of color or big transitions of color, right? right? Okay. Which is hard to use in a quilt because if you cut here and you get blue and you cut here and you get orange, it's not. Right. Yeah. Yes. So it's very scientific squirt bottle. Kind squirt of bottle. All effect. Right. Yes. But these are the fabrics for this right here. These are the fabrics that go with it. And it's in the quilt as well. That's this one. But that one is right there. Yeah. And it's then. It's in the quilt? It's this. I yeah. think it's this. And then this one right here is your paisley. See? Okay. So now this is, this is one color for the background maybe no i think there's four but really okay yes yep they're just four. very blendy okay. yes so you still you have to choose them and yeah maybe they're more tonal but you have to choose them sure okay and then you you know the saturation of color too right right because if you want something really hard and saturated like here in the yellow and then you want it to back off in saturation or lighter feeling then um you do you have to apply that too now, how do you how do you do that one? Hand painted stripes. So a you, squirt bottle. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Squirt bottle and stripes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you you scrunch it in a different way, right? So this is this one right here is more accordion style, right? right. If you're folding. So there's it. okay. Right. So that's how you would apply and then that one. What, how are they setting this dye? Um, they they set it with a formula. So it's not like a sun kind of a thing. It's a yeah, yeah. Oh, they, it is. They they'll put it in, they'll put it in the sun for a certain amount of time. Okay. okay. And then they do have a fixation process that okay. they go through. Um, uh, Northcutt, we also use a soft uh, silk kind of finish on our batiks because that's what Northcutt's known for. Sure. On North the regular cut cotton. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. there is though. We should get into that. There is a difference in the gray goods, mm -hmm. which also is spelled weird. In case you didn't know that, it's G R E I G E. Yes gray goods which means the uh the base, base. The, the the fabric content structure that you're using to make this so there's a difference in the gray goods for a batik and a print fabric yes and we say okay it's hand done like the wax is applied then it's dried right and then the colors applied and everything is hand done and scrunched up and dried and and bleached out and all of that and it needs to the the goods need to um put up with all of that right, right? sure so so yeah that's that's why it's a more dense kind of densely woven, woven. fabric mm -hmm. which by the way for those of you who've not used batiks if you're doing something with bias edges, a batik is way superior yeah. in handling to a regular print fabric because it's not going to stretch so much. I like it also for, oh, I love it for applique. Oh, oh yeah. I love it for because it presses nice and clean and flat and flat. Batiks and, press really flat. Yes. They're, it's a, it's a and wonderful. they don't fray as much. Right. There is a downfall with batiks. Yes. And that is that they do bleed. Mm -hmm. However, making sure if you make a batik quilt, I don't pre-wash my fabrics because I don't like to lose the finish. I like the feel of the fresh fabric. Yeah, me too. She doesn't pre-wash her. We don't pre-wash. We don't. So we do use <laughs> Synthrapol will take out dye that you have not dried. So if you wash your quilt and it bleeds, 
wash it again with Synthrapol. That'll take out any uh, errant dye. Yes. Um, then you dry it and you're good. If you have maybe tested, navies are notorious. Navies will, will bleed. Sometimes red. So, red, yeah. yeah. Um, so if you've you know dipped it in water and you see you've got a little bleed, use retain the first time you wash it and that'll keep the dye where it is so that you don't have the bleeding. Yeah. You know what's really fun to do is take a black. Take a black batik that you have and um, apply a little bleach to it. Oh. You won't believe the amount of colors that are on it. The oh, amount sure. of colors to build a black is just is crazy. Oh, I imagine. So yeah. start to experiment and look at your fabrics. You could make your okay. own custom. My bathtub is a nightmare. <laughs> if I start, that's where I practice. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> All right. Now let's let's talk about some of these quilts. We okay. gotta talk about some quilts. So this one right here is very different looking. So the batiks yes. themselves, and those are batiks, you might mistake them for print fabric just by looking at a distance, but they're not, they're batiks. They're batiks. Tell us about those. One thing I really like is I get to go to Indonesia a few times a year and obviously I miss it because of COVID, yeah. but um, I have play dates, okay? I have little retreats there and we get to play with different things and try different techniques. And this is hand painted. This right here is the hand painted right, right in here. So first you go through the motif coloration and then the wax and then the, um, color is applied right here, the yellow, or you can see in the orange there too. And then it's hand waxed on top of it to hold that. And then the background's applied. Okay. So they're painting the wax. They're ha first hand painting the color and then they okay. hand paint the wax. So they're painting the flower like yes. that. And then they paint the wax over, over the top it. of the flower. To hold that color. Okay. So the background color, when it's applied, doesn't ruin that brightness and saturation right. of color. Which is why you get more of these crisp edges than you would with a normal yes. chop based print. Yes. Okay. Because remember also, it depends um, how the wax is applied, right? If it's a liquid form, which is what you dip this into, a liquid form, mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. Then there's something I call a very another scientific name, peanut butter wax. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's actually called cold wax. Okay. And you can push it through a screen and then you can get um, kind of a finer lines. Or you can do this with a chanting or canting tool, C-A-N-T-I-N-G. Um, and that that is That's that thing with the... Long port, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh huh. So this quilt right here is the Flower Power quilt. Um, it's made out of the pattern slideshow, um, Atkinson design. Sure. And um, I actually got to teach um, uh, some of my factories in Indonesia how to quilt via Aww. Skype, uh, 13 hour time difference in a different language. Cool. <laughs> so yes, they learned on Terry Atkinson's design. That's she cool. gave um, me her blessing on that. Now, um, one thing you didn't mention was who is doing the chanting and the hand painting? Um, generally, what happens is the more delicate work and the hand painting is the women. Um, I'm now employing women in the factories. Okay. Um, generally, it's men who are doing uh, the the chop. It, like I said, it was grandfathered in. Those are the men who make the chops. These are also pretty heavy. Yo, they're okay? very heavy, So yes. to do they're... that every, every day, yeah. um, it's usually yeah. men who do that. So the delicate work is generally uh, the women. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that's a good thing for the women because yes. women typically in Indonesia are not it's a patriarchal society, yeah. yes. And I mean, it's 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 evolving, coming around. Um, we also have a training program to be a, in the batik industry is an honor. It's a career. Sure. It's a, it's wonderful. So they have a training program and they teach them how to scrunch the fabric because as quilters, we want 15 yards a certain way, right? right. We want it scrunched a certain way, colored the same way. Right. Even though it's handmade, we still expect a certain level. Well, okay. how many yards at a time are they making? 15 and, usually. So it's a 15 yard run. So yeah. it's not like the print fabric where they make these huge and yeah. then they have to double fold them and cut them. It's no. 15 yards at a time. But there's teams of five to 10 uh, people who work together and maybe they're throwing the soda ash on the same way or maybe they're scrunching the same way um, uh, and then they're on a team together. 
Neat. All okay. right. So that's that one. What, what about this one? This one is made out of the Kitan uh, fabrics. Mm -hmm. And this was in, I think it was in Quilt Maker. It's one of my uh, patterns. Um, stick Candy Twist, I think it's called. But Kitan is sticky rice in Indonesia. Oh. Okay. And it's a celebratory rice uh, that they uh, they will color different colors or something like that. So I took artistic license and I made a lot of colors. Okay, and, and that's that too, one, isn't it? And this one, you're seeing it. You're the first one seeing it. It's not out yet. The magazine oh. will hit newsstands. Mm, I think it's hitting newsstands this week, actually. And the Katan is in there, um, as well as some of the brush strokes, which is a hand painted stripe that we talked about the earlier. The brown one, yes. yeah. But doesn't it have like an optical illusion? It very much does. Yes. Um, there's also a recipe. This is called cornbread and pasole. And my pasole recipe is in the quilting magazine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that pattern then is going to be in a magazine and you can? You can purchase the magazine. It's on newsstands now or it should be coming to your mailbox. Or you can go online and just get that pattern on Quilting Daily. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. But then if you just Pretty. get the pattern, you won't get my pasole recipe and won't be able to take it to a retreat center. Well, then you need the magazine. Yeah. Okay. So. We're gonna have to go get magazines. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How long from designing a batik to getting a batik in your hands? Um, it can take four to five months. Okay. Yeah. That's it, not so bad. Yeah. It can take, and that that's putting it on a boat and hoping it gets through the Suez Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Past the boat turn sideways. Yes. Cool. Yes, but it does. It's every part of it is handmade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So I had a video created for my newest essential called the BFF, Best Friends in Quilting, and I thought you'd like to see it. This is how the chop of that one is being made, and you're going to be able to see the little pieces of copper that make that up. And he's going to um, be sliding them in there. He's got um, my artwork there. It takes 20 days to make the chop. The color mixing is all done by hand, all the colors mixed in buckets. And um, right now he's dipping it in. And this is called a dip dye. It gives more of a solid look to it. So I lay down the color that way, the smoking, and my scientific um, squirt, squirt bottle. bottle. Now he's going to dry it in the sun um, to get kind of the burst effects with the soda ash. And see how he's sprinkling it on there. And the color is now interacting with, um, with the different colors, um, marrying together a little bit, traveling through the, the folds. And now they're putting it through and fixing the color. Um, once they put it in the sun in the heat, it's not necessarily the sun, but it's also the heat. And so they're going to, they have to let it set and, and process, and then they're going to dry it, right? Because I can't put wax on something um, unless it's dry. So after the first color is done, then I have to dry it, um, and then I'm going to be able to apply the wax. So think about how long it takes. Now, what happens if it's rainy out? Yeah. Uh, we're in trouble, right? All right, so this is the chop for the BFF. Okay, and this is my favorite artisan. Um, he actually taught me when I was in Indonesia how to use that. And notice every single time he ap applies the chop, he dips it back in the wax. Okay, now if you apply the chop too long, it bleeds, the wax bleeds, and you obliterate the line of the design. If you have it off center, we don't like things that are off center, do right. we? We like it all mm -hmm. nice and even. Okay, um, now the wax is holding the color, so the background part has to be bleached off. Okay, so they're gonna bleach it. We have to stop the bleach process so it doesn't destroy the fabric sure. as well. Okay, but you'll notice that some of the color residue is still there. Mm -hmm. So for my background, I need to make sure I choose color that will go over maybe that color residue that I had in the motif. He's washing it there, all right. Like every single process, right, is ha is hand done. Sure. Okay. Um, so I just I think it's so cool to watch what they do. Now he's doing the second layer of color, which is the background. Okay. Um, so and yes, I've asked him to use gloves, but okay, they don't listen all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's smoking it again, or you know, scrunching it up, and the very scientific method of squirt bottle. Okay, again, drying for uh, the burst effect. So we're going through the same processes again, 
for the background as well. Mm -hmm. So this is this is how the BFF uh, essential is created. And so we they're going to have to do this for every color. Every single one, right? Yeah. yeah. So and each one, like we we talked about, um, removing the wax now um, with the hot water. Okay, and that will take the wax off of there. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of wax yeah. in your folds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they're going to need to um, rinse it off and they'll need to dry it again, right? Wash and dry. <laughs> now, notice where the, the water is going. We do reuse the water. Oh, okay. Good. So I, um, that's one thing I make sure of in the factories that I work with. That's a factory. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. And it's beautiful. <laughs> yep. So you see a lot of the batiks drying um, in the sun. And there's some of the colors that I had chosen for the BFFs. Usually I get strike offs in and I see, if I'm gonna choose 48 colors, I see maybe 50, um, 58 to 70. Sure, okay. and then you choose the ones that are? That I choose the ones that I like, yeah. yeah. So if they wanted to know more about how batiks are made, how would you get more information, Miss Karen Gibbs? <gasps> Well, they could go to my Facebook Live group, or my Facebook group is called Karen Gives for the Love of Batiks. And it's G-I-B-B-S. -S. Yes, for the love of batiks. And I talk about it every um, Thursday at one o'clock mountain time. Okay. okay? Um, and I talk uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, but I go into different details, color application or chop or, you know, designing, right. all of that. And they can learn more about batiks. There you go. That'd be a great place to go. I have to tell you, I am absolutely in love with batiks. I love working with batiks. They are just so satisfying yes. to work with. And they're not as troublesome as some print fabrics can be when you get into more difficult patterns. Um, I started on batiks years and years and years ago. And Northcott has got some really nice batiks coming out. We The last line that we saw, the last releases, we were pretty much, ooh, home runs. We bought a lot of Northcott batiks that are coming Yay. in the near future. So. Look for those in the QITV stores, Quilting in the Valley. We are in all over the place now. So <laughs> you can That's find awesome. a store near you. <laughs> in the meantime, go to Karen Gibbs for the Love of Batiks on Facebook and check out her live program, 1 p.m. Mountain Time on Thursdays. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> So today we are going to talk about the newest craze that is going along. It's not quilting, it's diamond painting. It's kind of like cross stitch-ish. But this is what you make and you see how sparkly they are. And it's very easy. Kids especially love to do this. Um, and I tell you, Lori loves to do this, Miss Lori. So what you get is you get this background um, it's like a plasticky kind of thing, and it's covered with a plastic sheet. And when you pull this plastic sheet back, you don't want to pull the whole plastic sheet back. You just pull back the area you're working on because this is really sticky. So we're going to work on this just like you would a cross stitch chart. And if I look right here, this says it's number six. I look on my chart. Number six is color 327. And then I go through my bags. I have all my bags of colors and 327 is right there. I'm gonna take some of these 327 beads, or whatever, they're not beads, I guess, diamonds, whatever you wanna call them, and I'm gonna pour some in my little tray, and then you kinda of go like this. There's little ridges in the bottom of the tray. You go like this, and it turns the beads right side up, so the faceted side is going up. You also get this little package of, it's like a sticky wax and you get your applicator, which is a hollow round metal tip. You're gonna take this, you're gonna stick it in that wax, and that gives you a sticky thing so that you can just go over the top of the bead and you've just picked up that bead. And all you do is go down in here and line it up on the six. Grab another one and go cover another six. And you just keep doing that until you get all the sixes covered. So if you get it in the wrong space or you get it so it's not lined up, that background is sticky, but it's not like a permanent, permanent thing. So you can kind of push them around and make them line up. 
and you just keep going until you've covered all the sixes. And then when you're done with the sixes, you would move on to, let's see, I don't know, there's a D there. You know, maybe I'll do the Ds next. Uh, but this is something that you, you can do at night, you know, sitting in front of the TV or uh, sitting at the dining room table. Just something, it's kind of just zen-like. You're just picking up beads and putting them down where they go. Like a cross stitch, only instead of having to do two stitches for each, you're just sticking one bead down with this little applicator on each X. And then you get a pretty picture when you're done. Um, and they will fit, most of them, they're like 12 by 12, um, 16 by 16, there's some 16 by 20s, um, and there's a couple of 12 by 18s, but most of them will just fit in any frame that you can pick up over at uh, a convenience store, you know. Okay, so I just placed all of those beads. You can see how quickly that goes. Anyway, it's all the rage. It's the new thing, and we just started carrying them. So we have lots of different designs in all of our QITV stores, which currently are in Champaign, Illinois, Rockford, Illinois, Moline, Illinois, LaSalle, Illinois, Peoria, Illinois, and now Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And we have these in all stores. Lots of different designs. So come check them out. It's a fun thing to do. It's especially a fun thing to do with the kids. Okay, that's Lessons for Lisa for today. So thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed learning all about batiks and I hope the diamond painting intrigued you just a little bit. But for our news, you maybe, maybe you might have heard some seagulls in the background of our video today. I wonder where those came from. I don't know. Maybe it might be our new retreat center. Huh. You might want to watch on our Facebook page and you'll see some pretty cool videos of the progress we're making on our new four bedroom, four bath, sleeps eight with full kitchen luxury condo, downtown Manitowoc, a block off of Lake Michigan. It's a beautiful place. Keep watching. Next episode is going to be a full tour. We'll see you then.